Hey, what's up? My name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be starting on a reading vlog reading some of my most anticipated books of the year. In this vlog, you're going to see a variety of different genres, including, you know, a romance book, Love in the Time of Serial Killers, but it also kind of has to do with true crime. You're also going to see me read Runtime, which is a new thriller that I'm very intrigued in, and then also Patricia Wants to Cuddle, which is a horror novel that I've also been really intrigued by, as well as The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead, which is one of my most anticipated thrillers of this year because this is the same author as In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. And then also, if you're on my Patreon, I'm going to be posting an extended version of this reading vlog where I'm also going to be reading The Paul Bearers Club by Paul Tremblay. And let's just say that I had some pretty extreme thoughts on this book. Whether that's, you know, positive or negative, I mean, you'll just have to see. I'll include the extended vlog link down below if you want to see that. Let me send you back a couple days. Hello, how's it going? It's about 2.30 in the afternoon right now, but I wanted to update you because I've been listening to runtime on audio pretty much all day today. I'm currently 67% of the way through the audiobook and, you know, earlier today I just went and got some grocery shopping done, but you know, it's kind of a trip to go to the grocery store that I like to go to. It's like a 20-25 minute drive because I like to go to this, you know, really cheap, you know, Winco. It's great. And so I listened to this audiobook on the way down there. I listened to it while I was in the grocery store and then I listened to it the whole drive back and now I've been home for about like an hour and a half and I've just been continuing to listen to this on audio and I'm really enjoying this one. I was kind of, you know, not sure if I wanted to pick up this book or not because with Katherine Ryan Howard, this author, she's one of those authors that's been very hit or miss for me before, you know, because I've read three books from her so far. She was actually one of my book troop picks for last year with the book 56 Days and that one ended up being mostly just fine for me. The only book I've loved from her so far is The Nothing Man. Like I really did like The Nothing Man but even that one was about like a four star for me. It wasn't a favorite. But this one I was really intrigued by because I had heard that this one takes place on a movie like film set and so it's called Runtime and it has like that little strip of like film in the middle of the cover and I was like okay I mean I'm definitely intrigued by the premise for this and in this story it's really interesting because we kind of get two point of views um we do get multiple narrators on the audiobook as well which is also exciting but we mainly follow there's this guy Steve who's like the director of this movie that they're currently shooting and then we also get the point of view of Adele and she's kind of like our main protagonist of the story and she's basically this actress. She's actually been struggling a lot lately as an actress because she doesn't know if this is something that she can do anymore because acting has just been really like financially unstable for her for like a long period of time and she's only been doing like soap operas and things like that and so she's kind of like at her breaking point and she thinks that she's gonna have to quit acting when she gets a phone call from these guys who are saying hey um so we have this spot in a movie we want you to play the lead in the movie but we need you to come like literally today because the lead actress had to like drop out of the movie and so they need a replacement like right away and so she's going to have to you know go to this movie set and like be the lead actress in this movie that she doesn't really know and it's kind of creepy you know because this movie um you know all the cast and crew it's kind of like out in the middle of the woods or like a forest like it's out there in the middle of nowhere and she is the only woman on set which is kind of like whoa weird red flag right like immediately kind of gives you uncomfortable vibes and they're telling people in the area they're like don't be alarmed if you like hear screaming you know because we're filming a horror movie so like that can be expected and just like i don't know it's kind of like oh it's a little creepy you know and so far i'm just absolutely loving the vibes of this you know because it's like okay there have been so many like kind of subtly creepy things happening like you know her being the only woman on set they're saying that she has to like leave her phone behind or like they're recommending that she leaves her phone behind because they're like you're not gonna get any good service out there anyways because they're like in the middle of the woods and then she also finds out that other crew members have just been hired to like replace other crew members recently so like it seems like a lot of the crew has just been hired within the last day which is unusual. There's also some you know surprisingly good commentary at least in my opinion on how difficult it can be to be a woman on the set of a movie in comparison to a male you know actor and how you know a lot of times male actors can get away with 
whatever kind of strange behavior they have to do to like get into character and she's like i i really think that you know a woman would never be able to get away with this like a woman like they would just fire a woman for behaving in any kind of strange uncomfortable way that like makes the rest of the crew feel uncomfortable and i love that she's like but maybe women don't need to do that because they're just good actors like they're just good at their job they don't need to you know make everyone feel so uncomfortable just to get into their character or whatever i don't know i'm really enjoying the commentary on this i i think i especially am loving this because i'm such a huge movie lover and so i love feeling like i'm seeing the behind the scenes and like making of like a horror movie you know it's just really fun in that way and i do think too that you know book wise this book is actually reminding me a lot of the book night film mostly just because of the kind of like creepy movie set with a director who's like a little questionable it definitely reminds me of that book but then it also is kind of reminding me of the movie men like that horror movie men but mostly just because of the way she's like the only woman and it's very kind of like awkward and she kind of feels like she's being watched sometimes by the men because that movie is absolutely traumatizing like literally so traumatizing and this book is just reminding me a little bit of it like i'm getting the same vibe so like i don't think it's gonna go nearly in that direction that the movie men goes into because i mean this is a thriller first of all it's not a horror i'm also loving that um i didn't mention this but like in between the points of views from like Adele and the director we also get the screenplay of the actual movie like in between chapters which is really cool because they actually read out the screenplay like they're doing the voices themselves it's really cool because you get the girl's voice who's playing the actress like on the voice parts it's kind of hard to explain but i really like the way the writing is with that like i like getting the actual screenplay and then seeing what's actually happening like behind the scenes while they're filming the movie i don't know it's just really freaking cool anyways um i'm not feeling super great today i'm just like really crampy and really like uh so I'm probably just gonna stay in bed for most of the afternoon and just listen to this audiobook because it's fantastic finished it. All right, so I just finished listening to Runtime on audio. I can't believe I listened to this whole thing within like a few hours. I was just really obsessed with it and to be fair, I had nothing really much going on today. I was just like laying in bed because I've been feeling so nauseous. But anyways, this book was actually really good. It really surprised me. I do think the first half of the book was probably better in my opinion and more interesting than the second half of the book and there were a few reveals in this book that I don't know how I feel about yet. I feel like I need to take more time to think about it because there was one that I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting, but I don't feel like, at least for me personally, I don't feel like there was anything towards the end of this book that was like super shocking. I feel like if you're the kind of person that reads thrillers pretty often, then there's not gonna be anything towards the end of this book that's like really, really surprising. Um, it's all kind of like something you might expect, but I still think I'm giving this book four stars just because of the atmosphere and like the vibes in this book alone. Like I just really had a good time with it. I really love the idea of like an actress on a movie set like getting called to something last minute and feeling like things are kind of like she's questioning like is this a real movie set? Like what is going on? Like is the crew pranking her? Because she starts to feel you know very uncomfortable being on this movie set and I can't even imagine like if I was the only woman working on a horror movie set like that just sounds absolutely terrifying and so I just really connected with her because of that and felt bad for her because of that. There was also just so many moments in this book that were so like well written and just really atmospheric for me. Like I loved the scenes where she would be like alone in her cabin at night and she would feel like she's being watched and creepy things would be happening and I genuinely was like so hooked. Like I couldn't even focus on anything else that I was doing because I was just like listening to the audio being like what the fuck is about to happen and it was just a good time you know. I feel like this is one of those perfect books to read if you're looking for that kind of atmosphere of like you know woods atmosphere and somebody's watching you it definitely has all of that and I also just you know like I said earlier I love um, the location of this. You know, I love that it's all taking place on a movie set and that we don't know if we can trust the director and all of that. It was just really fun and really entertaining. I feel like this is a more, um, like, standard mainstream thriller version of Night Film, you know, because I feel like Night Film is a little bit... Like, Night Film is a little bit more dense and it's a little bit more... I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, like, pretentious, I guess, even though I really enjoyed Night Film. But I feel like Night Film is a little bit more ambiguous and it only caters to, like, a certain kind of reader, which is definitely for me, but I know Night Film is not for everyone. Like, there's a lot of people that don't really like Night Film. But if you liked the idea of Night Film, then I do think you would like Runtime. It's just really interesting. I don't know if this is my favorite book from this author, necessarily. I think I have to think on 
want it more, but as of right now, I think the Nothing Man is still my favorite, but like this one was a fun time. I would just say to go in with some like lower expectations and just expect a wild spooky time. Like, I don't know, it was fun. I also do highly recommend the audiobook just because the narrator, they all have Irish accents and that's always so fun to listen to. I love it. So yeah, runtime, I already finished it. Was not expecting to finish an entire book this afternoon, but here we are. So take me back. That song slaps. It's Thief by Imagine Dragons. One of my faves. Oh yeah, there it is. Mac and cheese with bacon and asparagus and of course the routine Sprite. Mm. Mm. Period. Hello, how goes it? It is the next afternoon, if you couldn't tell. It's about 2.15, you know, I wanted to start reading a little earlier in the day, but I had some adulting, boring things that I had to do this morning. It was a lot of emails, you know, a lot of different things, but I wanted to let you know that I just started Love in the Time of Serial Killers. I'm only 22 pages into this book, but I'm already really enjoying it. Like, I don't know, this is a romance that I've been super intrigued by because um, the protagonist is like obsessed with true crime and like true crime podcasts and things like that. And so this is a romance about how it's a romance between her and her neighbor, but it's cute because at the start of this book, she like thinks that he's a serial killer, but it's actually a situation where, you know, she's just really paranoid because of all the true crime that she listens to, which I can definitely relate. You know, I've been there. I feel like a lot of times when I go on these like true crime podcasts, binge like listens where I just listen to a bunch of episodes in like one week then I get like super paranoid about like everything because I think everything is like a crime or like about to be a crime and so like I totally get where she's coming from you know I also um put in my little v uh, bookmark here that I have because the protagonist, I mean, he's been described very vaguely so far. So naturally I'm going to picture V as the lead in this book as one does. But yeah, it's about two o'clock in the afternoon. I'm going to make an iced coffee because I feel like I deserve it. Today I'm just having a rough, you know, cramp day. I feel like my body is trying its best to kill me right now. And it's just really mad painful. And so even though it's so hot outside today, um, we do have the AC on in here, but it's still like really hot out today. I'm going to lay on the couch with my heating pad because I'm in so much pain and just read a cute romance and drink a nice coffee because that's that's what you do. I love this um, iced coffee delight caramel macchiato. Like honestly nothing makes me happier than just pouring this. It's just so simple, you know? Waking up in my bed Just a stuck in my head I'm not even hungover I wanna call your phone Tell you what you did wrong Then ask it to come over Not very good with decisions Know what's right but I don't listen I don't, I don't And I complain and dismiss it Then I keep on reminiscing I know Okay, hello, it is nearly five o'clock in the afternoon and I've I've been a little bit distracted this afternoon but I wanted to update because I'm a hundred pages in to love in the time of serial killers and I'm really enjoying this one so far you know this was one of my most anticipated books of the year because it just sounded like it was gonna be really adorable and I'm glad to confirm that it is really adorable and I feel like this is exactly what I needed right now I find the main character in this book to be so fucking relatable like there's just so many comments that she's making that is just very relatable to me there was also a line where she was talking about if they had cast her in a movie. She says, I hope they would at least cast a fat actress to play me. Representation was important. So I also didn't realize that the protagonist in this book was going to be plus size. So that's also some representation that I wasn't expecting. Also, okay, the love interest dude, Sam, in this book, you know, who at first she thinks he might be a serial killer and he's just proving to be one of the nicest, like softest humans. And I just love their kind of like banter that they have going on. And you know how earlier I said that I was picturing V for like the guy that plays Sam. 
it could not be more perfect. Like, he does remind me of V because she says he has long black hair that, like, kind of covers his eyes sometimes and it's kind of like shaggy hair that's in his face and then she also describes him as kind of like more on the lean side and kind of like tall like lean which definitely reminds me of V and then he's also very musical turns out he's very musical in this book and so hello this is amazing <laughs> and so I'm just really adoring um Sam's character like he's just so freaking sweet and so adorable and I love their chemistry that they have so far but I also yeah I just really relate to this girl, Phoebe. I think it's also really interesting that, you know, she's, like, the whole situation is that she's coming back to the town where she grew up because her dad recently died, and so she's trying to take over the house that he was living in, you know, like, he used to live in this apartment, and so she's clearing out the apartment, and now she's, you know, noticing this neighbor guy, Sam, and they're having their situation, but it's interesting because she used to have this best friend named Allison, um, in this small town, and they kind of ended on some weird terms, and you do kind of find out pretty early on like what happened between them and I feel like it's extra relatable in that sense to me because I also had some awkward friendships that I or friendships that I had that were really strong friendships that ended in a really like awkward way and so now she's kind of having to deal with that because she's like seeing the friend in the town again and she almost like can't avoid her it's a situation where she can't avoid her so it's really interesting to see that friendship being fleshed out as well and I just also think it's so cool because she's currently working on her PhD and so she's working on all of these different like true crime things and her like dissertation that she's working on is related to true crime so there's just a lot of things that really interest me about this book I'm just really enjoying it so now me and my sister are getting dinner ready we're making this like kind of new recipe tonight it's gonna be like a lemon chicken garlic kind of dish and then we're also making um, a rice casserole and potato like mashed potatoes and Caesar salad and some bread like it's gonna be a weird mix of things but hopefully it'll be good couple of hours since I've last updated you. It's about 11 o'clock at night right now. I finally just got finished um, showing the movie Forgotten to my sister, which is one of my favorite like Korean thriller movies. And I've been wanting her to watch it for like literally months since I watched it in March with my Patreon. And it was so good. Like on a rewatch, I just like love that movie so much. It's so freaking twisty and turny and just there's so many plot twists. And the movie is still available to stream on Netflix if you're interested, so I highly recommend. But anyways, I wanted to update you because I'm now 220 pages into this book and I'm really sad to say this, but I feel like I spoke a little bit too soon with all of my praise for this book because I'm starting to feel like I'm having a change of heart and that makes me sad. Because, you know, in the beginning of this book, I was really loving this main character. You know, I was loving all of her talk about true crime and I was really adoring Sam, like, as her neighbor. I just thought he was, like, so adorable and sweet. And I don't know, I'm just, the more that I'm reading this, like, I feel like ever since page 100, I've just been getting more and more irritated because our main character, you know, at first I found her to be very relatable and, like, quirky and just kind of, like, funny and sarcastic. I love that she's like super into true crime, you know, but I feel like after like 200 pages of it now, I'm just starting to get a little bit irritated with her because I feel like at this point in the book, like after 100 pages in, it's very clear to everyone that Sam is not a serial killer, you know, like she's definitely just a bit paranoid because of her love and her passion for true crime and like, you know, being able to look at different cases all the time and, you know, she's literally doing her dissertation on, you know, true crime related things. So like, she's definitely a little paranoid and like, I can definitely tell at the beginning, like I understood why she had some red flags with him and why she was like jokingly thinking like maybe he's a serial killer, totally valid. But like now we're to the point in the book where it's like very obvious that he's not a serial killer, that he's a totally harmless, soft little butterfly. And I don't know why she's still so, like, I don't know. I just don't really like the way that she's approaching the situation. She's just like really confrontational with him about it, thinking that he's a 
serial killer. And I just don't think that Sam deserves it. Like, I don't know. She's like going into his garage and like demanding to like see his garage. And she's like, well, I heard a sound the other night. And like, where did that come from? And making him explain himself when he's like, he literally doesn't owe her any explanation for like what he's doing in his life. Like, I don't know. And also too, the way that she, you know, just brings up true crime at like any given moment in any conversation that has nothing to do with true crime at all is a little bit cringe for me. It just feels like the author's trying to like push this like character that's obsessed with true crime. Like it almost feels like she's trying a little bit too hard. I don't know. And then also, you know, these characters, they finally had their first kiss and it was just not not steamy in the way that I was hoping for. I mean, if you don't want to get spoiled for like what happens immediately after their first kiss, then like just skip ahead a few seconds, but they literally have their first kiss and it's like, you know, this passionate whatever kiss. And he literally just says to her, you have great boobs. Can I say that? Like what? What is romance these days? Like, I'm sorry, that is not romantic. That sounds like what an 18 year old frat boy would say. And so, yeah, I don't know. I'm not really feeling the chemistry with them anymore like it's so weird because you know at the beginning of this book I was saying how I really liked their chemistry and their banter because they were really awkward around each other and I just found that to be like really entertaining at the beginning of this but now we're getting to the point where they're actually starting to you know like things are starting to happen between them and it's just still awkward like I don't know if I like the chemistry. I'm just not really feeling it with these two. And I feel like the um, pop culture references in this book are starting to get a little out of hand. Like at first it was kind of fun because I was like, ooh, cool. Like I know that and like, ooh. But now it's getting to the point where there's pop culture references on nearly every other page. And like, I'm not even kidding, like nearly every other page. And I'm just like, okay, I could do without all of that. So I don't know, <sighs> I'm, I'm still enjoying it. I'm just feeling a little disappointed because I feel like, you know, with the first 100 pages, I was really digging this almost to the point where I was like, could this be a five star book for me? But now I just feel like the characters are starting to irritate me a little bit. I don't know, I'm struggling with it, but at the same time, I have like about 100 pages left. So I think I'm just gonna lay here tonight and finish busting out these last 100 pages. Okay, serious question. I just got to this part. She's like, I'm just saying I may need some space, not in a Taylor Swift kind of way. What the fuck does that mean? Like, I'm just saying I may need some space, but not in a Taylor Swift kind of way. What is a Taylor Swift kind of way? Like, what? Is she trying to say the Taylor Swift kind of way would be like, I need some space, like that's a breakup? Like, that's code for a breakup? Like, I don't understand. Oh my gosh, just found out the protagonist is a Capricorn. She said, call it being a Capricorn. I'm a Capricorn. It all makes sense now. At least why I found her to be so relatable at the beginning. She's a fucking Capricorn. Hello, good morning. I am here once again to eat my words because this book was a freaking roller coaster and I have so many mixed emotions. Like, I feel like it's been a long time since I've had this amount of mixed feelings towards the book because by the ending, I freaking loved it again. I loved it. And now I don't know how to feel because. You know, at the beginning of this book, I was saying that this protagonist was like so relatable for me for a number of different reasons. Like, especially in those first 100 pages, I was like, wow, this might be one of my most relatable characters of all time. And then very quickly after that, she just really started to get on my nerves with like the way that she was behaving, like some of the decisions that she was making. I don't know, like her need to insert true crime into every single conversation was just getting kind of annoying for me. And I was telling my sister that and she was like, what do you mean? Like, that is you, like you insert insert books or like whatever you're currently into into every single conversation and I was like holy shit maybe she's so annoying because she's so similar to me like what it's just so funny to me because it's like is she annoying because she's so similar to me like is that why I find her annoying like this is why I don't do relationships you know towards the end I found her to be even more relatable with like the way that she was talking about marriage and kids and how she's not totally sure if that's something that she wants for herself and just a whole bunch of things in this book that I was just like, wow, freaking relatable. And the fact that she's a Capricorn, you know, it fucking makes sense. I feel like so much about her character makes sense now that I know that she's a Capricorn because, you know, me and her were on the same page. But yeah, the ending of this book had me feeling so like gushy and just like, Gah! it was so cute. You know, like I really love Sam. I feel like Sam is probably one of my favorite male love interests that I've read in a long time. I mean, besides his one stupid frat boy comment about her boobs, which was like so out of character for him. Like, I feel like other than that, he's just genuinely such a fucking sweetheart. Like he's such a softy and I just, Gah! I love him. I also did really enjoy the relationship between 
between this main girl Phoebe and her brother because they kind of had this really you know difficult childhood because their dad was so like emotionally manipulative towards them and emotionally abusive so it was kind of beautiful to see you know because like the whole premise of this book is that their dad dies and so she's coming back to the apartment where he in the small town where he still lives like her brother still lives there and so they're kind of getting the chance to you know reconnect as well even though they weren't super close growing up because of their situation with their family but I just really liked their sibling relationship in this book like it was just so cute and like some of the moments towards the end with her brother I was just like my freaking heart and I don't know I started putting blue tabs on all the parts where I found her to be super relatable like he asked her when she was younger like what did you think or what did you imagine that you would become and she said maybe I thought I'd be a writer or an editor or something with books I wanted to live in a big city in a cool apartment like they always have on tv one with a view of the skyline and a quirky doorman like holy shit me literally I always wanted to be a writer or work with books and like live in New York City like that was always the dream so I'm just like ugh, I am floored like I am shocked at the amount of roller coaster I went on with this book because by the halfway point I was literally like should I DNF this like I'm just not enjoying it anymore and then it just sucked me right back in it just did that again and so I'm torn over like how I want to rate this because you know I do think this main character is one of the most relatable characters I've read in a long time even though she frustrates me at times maybe it's because she's so relatable and then Sam is like legit one of my favorite male love interests that I've read in a long time so like I feel like I've got to give this four stars because it's not a perfect five star because I had some issues with it but it's definitely not lower than a four star for me because pff, I might like reread this in the future you know what I'm saying like that's how much I loved it so fuck I love that I got proved wrong though, you know, because for a while there I was like, oh no, like maybe this isn't what I thought it was going to be. Maybe I'm not actually going to enjoy this, but I'm glad. I'm so glad that I ended up, you know, enjoying this one for the most part because I'm obsessed with this cover. I love this cover. I want this to stay on my bookshelves literally forever. And now it probably will, you know, it probably can, which is good because I annotated it this morning. I mean, it's not really morning anymore. It's like 1230. Um, but this morning, Rachel came into my room and she was holding a cup of coffee and she was just sitting on the edge of my bed talking to me and then Phoenix jumped and hit the side of the cup. So my um, comforter is currently in the washing machine because uh, fucking coffee got spilt all over it, like literally pff, like a whole cup of coffee. And so hopefully it's salvageable. I don't know if that's a word. Anyways, I'm gonna go to the post office right now because I got this notice that was like about a package and I don't even know what it is, but it's saying that I have to pay the postage or something for this package. And so I'm just like, what the heck is going on? I don't know. Also, I wanted to show you because I got another book surprisingly in the mail from Natalie Johnson from my Amazon wish list. She she sent Gone to See the River Man, which is once again another horror novella that I'm so excited to read. I feel bad because I keep getting all these horror novellas in the mail and I just wrapped up my horror novella reading vlog like very recently. So I'm like, God damn it. But maybe, I don't know if I should save these for like part two in the future or if I should just read them as soon as humanly possible. Anyways, let's go to the post office and see what's up with this package and then I'm gonna come home and read. Like that's all my plans are today is to read. Okay, I just got back from the post office and I forgot to take my camera. I got the package, it's from Sourcebooks and apparently the reason why I had to pay postage was because they sent this to my old address, you know, before I moved, which is strange because, you know, I moved months ago now, so I don't know why that would happen. But it's weird because they put the address on here for Rachel, so we thought it was Rachel, but when I heard it was Sourcebooks, I was like, I think that's me. So I had to pay the forwarding postage. I don't know what it is, oh my God. Okay, it is. The Last Housewife! Oh my god. Okay, I'm so glad. I decided to go and grab this because I've been dying to read this. Okay, they did say, okay, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm so dumb. They did tell me that they sent this and I was just like waiting for it. I was like, why is it supposed to come in the mail? Like, what the heck? But I didn't realize this was published by Sourcebooks. Oh my god, it all makes sense now. Wow, what the heck that I need to read this now, like immediately. I actually do. I just got the audiobook checked out from my library for this. Ooh. It's happening. This is a sign from the universe. It's happening today. Yes. Gosh, this is the new Ashley Winstead. You know, this is the new one. She's the same author as In My Dreams I Hold a Knife, which was one of my favorite like top thrillers of last year. And this one, I've heard that it's very dark. You know, I've heard that it's pretty dark with this one. I've heard there's a lot of trigger warnings for things like sexual assault and different things like that. So I'm excited though. I'm so excited to read this. Wow, I'm so dumb. Why did I not think it was this? I had no idea. <laughs> Oh my god, yes, thank you, source books.
wanted to do an update because it's now just after three o'clock in the afternoon and I am 170 pages into The Last Housewife. And this book is really wild. It's really dark. Um, everyone was right who was saying that this book is you know, incredibly dark and really different from In My Dreams I Hold a Knife, but it also does have a lot of similarities as well. Um, because in this book, we're following this protagonist named Shay, and she went to this college in New York eight years ago. Eight years later, she's living in Texas, and she listens to this true crime podcast, which, like, really cool. I also didn't realize that I'd be reading two books back to back that involve, you know, true crime, but, you know, here we are. I had completely forgot, like, the whole premise of this book. So, basically, she listens to this true crime podcast, and the guy who does the podcast, his name is Jamie, and she actually knew him when they were in college together in New York. And his most recent podcast episode is about her college best friend from back in the day, Laurel, she, now a 30-year-old woman, went back to the college campus and supposedly killed herself on the college campus. And it doesn't make any sense because they're like, why would she go back there? Because they had a lot of trauma. Like, she, she especially experienced a lot of trauma when she was in college. So they can't figure out why she would even want to go back there. So he's suspecting that her death wasn't a suicide and that there's something more weird going on. And it's weird too because she also died in the same exact way that one of their other friends died when they were actually in college eight years ago. So there's kind of like a weird connection between these two deaths. And then also in the last eight years, there has been a number of women going missing, like an unusually high amount of women between the ages of like 18 to 25 going missing in the last eight years specifically. And so because of all of these things, um, Shay decides to go to New York and go back to the college and kind of try to figure out what actually happened with her friend's death. And she meets up with this guy, Jamie, who does the true crime podcast. And there are some bits in this book where he's kind of like interviewing her and it almost kind of feels like you kind of read like podcast transcripts, if that makes sense. And this book is really fucking good, but it's so dark. You know, the beginning of this book was definitely reminding me a lot of In My Dreams I Hold a Knife just because of the setup of like something happened when they were in college years ago and now it's like they're going back to the school to try to figure out what happened. It definitely has that kind of energy. So it did remind me quite a bit of In My Dreams I Hold a Knife at the beginning, but this book is definitely a different monster. Like this book is so different. It's very dark. Like while In My Dreams I Hold a Knife was kind of like a fun college campus like murder mystery kind of book, I feel like this is like so incredibly dark. Like there are so many trigger warnings for things like rape and for things like sexual assault and just so many things that are tough to read. I mean, you know, right at the start of this book, the way that we find out that these characters met in college, like this isn't a spoiler because it's mentioned almost right at the beginning of the book, but the way that these two girls met in college is after one of them was raped. And so there's already this kind of like bond that's formed between them because she experienced something so awful and she was like the only person there for her. But then also like the Way the police in this town of theirs are handling the rape cases it's just so awful like it's so hard to read about like it is absolutely disgusting and it sucks to know that there are probably police like this out there who just don't take these kind of cases seriously and they think they they almost like put the blame on the woman like well let this be a lesson for you to like not you know tempt a boy and like you know this boy's life is like on the line like this is a very serious accusation you know like that type of bullshit it's just it's really hard to read and like i don't know this book has gone in a direction that i just did not expect it to go in that direction and i don't know how i feel about it because it makes me feel so like icky and like sick to be reading something like this but it's also like one of those things where it's like a train wreck that you can't look away from i also though like i don't know i'm kind of relieved because i was really strongly considering having this book as a book troop pick like it was almost like locked in guaranteed gonna be a book troop pick and then kind of last minute i ended up changing my mind because i had heard that this book had dealt with some pretty intense like sexual assault warnings and it was really dark and so i just didn't want this to be the book that, you know, I would encourage potentially wide audiences to read with me just because I wasn't sure if this is something that everyone can like handle. And I'm kind of glad to be honest because as much as I'm enjoying this book, I'm glad 
that I didn't make it a book trip pick because I think this one is really hard to talk about and honestly really uncomfortable to talk about. And so I can't even imagine like having a live show discussing this one. Like it's a lot, you know, it's definitely a lot. But yeah, I think I'm just going to continue reading it. I'm really enjoying it. My friend Erin just started doing some reading sprints over on her Patreon. So I think I'm going to join in um, and watch those and then just continue to get through this book. And I'm just flying through it today. You know, I really am. I'm, I think I'm about halfway through at this point. How's it going? It's um, a little bit later in the night. It's about 11.15 at night right now, but I wanted to give you an update because I got all the way up to page 316 this afternoon and I only have about 50 pages left. Um, this afternoon, you know, we made some pizza for dinner. We made like our homemade pizza. It was so freaking good. I just do the classic, you know, ham and pineapple. Like that's my personal fave. And then tonight, um, we ended up watching this movie called Coherence. And this is a movie that my sister has has been wanting me to watch for a long time because you know last night we watched my movie pick which was forgotten and so tonight we watched her movie pick which was coherence and this movie was fucking insane and i don't understand anything that i just watched but i'm also very intrigued by it and it was like a really good mystery like what a freaking story it's just like one of those like quiet weird kind of sci-fi movies i just really loved it like it was really good and then after that we watched a two hour big brother episode that honestly really only needed to be like one hour long like there was so much filler in that episode but ugh. anyways this book i am nearing the finish line with this book i feel like i do talk about this you know often when i review books but it's hard for me to read books that are almost entirely about violence against women you know like that's not something that's easy or fun for me to read about and I'm just finding lately that I'm just not really here like I, I don't want to exist and be on the internet just to read books that are like violence against women like I don't know how to explain it it's just it's hard for me to read so I'm not loving this the way that I want to and the way that I should because it's not a subject matter that I really want to to be reading. Like this book is just incredibly dark. Like there are so many dark moments and there's so much violence against these women and it just really makes my stomach turn but like in not a fun way. And I know that thrillers like this, you know, they have their place in the world, right? Like I know they exist for a reason and that they're powerful and that they're good thrillers. Like it's a well-written book but for my personal taste I'm just not having a fun time reading it you know like it's just really hard for me to read stuff like this and I feel like I keep picking up books like this you know thinking that it's going to be one thing and then it ends up being something a lot more darker than I was anticipating but even having a lot of the warnings you know because I had heard from some of, so many of my friends that this one is like you know really dark and there's a lot of violence against women and it's hard to read so I went into this book knowing those things but you know I really did genuinely want to read this because Ashley Winstead is one of my favorite thriller authors so I thought you know maybe I'll just like do it and it's just it's a lot you know it's hard it's hard to read this one and I do recognize that this is like a really interesting story like there is a lot of really thrilling things happening there's a lot of like good twists involved in this mystery that's happening but it's just not an enjoyable 
read for me. And I feel like a lot of times these days when I read a thriller book, it's like, yeah, I read them because I want to be thrilled and because I want to, you know, try and figure out a mystery. But I also read them for fun. You know, like thrillers are a genre that I go to kind of like to escape and just to have fun and like figure out a mystery. And I feel like sometimes thrillers like this can feel so heavy. And I just don't know if I love that feeling. So, I mean, right now, you know, this book is looking to be about a 3.5 out of 5 because, you know, as I said, I can recognize that this is a really well-written thriller and I do really like the mystery. Like, I'm engaged in what's happening, but it's also just, like, not the best time. Like, I'm not gonna lie, it's not a fun time reading this book. Like, I'm just struggling and I feel like the fact that I've nearly finished this entire thing in one day um, doesn't help with, like, how it's affecting me because I'm like, oh my god, like, this is just so awful. Because I only have the last 50 pages I think I just want to finish listening to this on audio right now because I don't imagine it would take me too long to finish this and then I will see you in the morning with final thoughts and hopefully read something a little bit more you know less heavy tomorrow <laughs> hello what's up it is the next morning I mean it's actually about noon right now it's about 12 o'clock and uh last night I did end up finishing the last housewife and I think I do feel comfortable at like a 3.5 out of 5 for like my rating for this book because you know as I did say last night I do think this is a really good well-written thriller you know it's just not exactly what I'm in the mood for these days so I guess it's more of a me thing than like the book but I don't know I really enjoyed this book I do think you know I was pretty obsessed with like the first hundred pages of this book and I did actually check the premise of this book and it does talk about how there's a cult situation happening in this book that this main character is trying to get away from and I do think this book is pretty bold in the way that it compares religion to like cult like there was a few moments in this book where there were some like com like side-by-side -side comparisons happening and I was like shit you know like she is on to something and I don't know it was just it was really interesting it was really well done and there were really good characters in this it was just a lot this morning I just went and picked up some breakfast sandwiches for me and Rachel because we're starving and I also just got like right now I just got Patricia wants to cuddle checked out from the library so I like immediately downloaded it because I'm like I'm so curious about this book all I know is that it's kind of like a horror book like I don't really know how horror this book is gonna get you know like I'm not totally sure but all I know is that it involves this like reality dating show and then there's some kind of like horror aspect to it where there's like Bigfoot or there's some kind of creature that like fucks shit up I mean I don't really know like just based on looking at this cover she's like being held in her like her whole body's being grabbed by like this bigfoot giant hand so like i really don't know what to expect with this i've also heard that this is pretty gay because it's categorized under like lgbtq on like my goodreads and on my libby app so like i have no idea what to expect with this but the audiobook is only six hours long so if i'm listening on double speed i should be able to get through it in like about three hours which is exciting so like i kind of just want to listen to this all day hi what's up it's actually been a few hours i wasn't really able to record any footage of me actually reading it because i had to charge my camera battery but it's about three o'clock in the afternoon and i just finished listening to patricia wants to cuddle and this book like i don't even know how to pitch this book to you like i don't even know what this book really is um i guess my pitch of like it's a you know it's like a reality dating show and then there's like some bigfoot kind of thing happening is what this book is but I feel like this book in a way it's kind of what I was expecting but in another way it's almost not really anything like what I was expecting it to be. I feel like um this is one of those books where you know it definitely has a lot of commentary on how ridiculous these dating shows can be you know like any like dating reality show it has a lot of commentary on that which is definitely expected but I feel like I don't know the first half of this book felt very much like you know kind of just like satire and like 
you know, there wasn't too much horror at the beginning of this book, especially for the first half. I was like, okay, like when is the story gonna really pick up? And then I feel like the second half of this book just gets a little chaotic and it definitely feels a little bit horror. But I also don't know if I would categorize this book as a horror book, like just genre wise, like I don't really know what I would consider this. Like I feel like the whole thing to me really just feels like kind of like comedy and satire. But I just also don't know like how much of this book I was supposed to take seriously, if any of it. Like the tone is just very hard to place. I also feel like there's a lot of commentary in this book, you know, about women who go on to these shows with different kinds of expectations, you know, because there's a lot of commentary on women who go on to these kind of shows to actually find love and like what that says about them. But then there's also a lot of commentary about, you know, how women of color are treated on shows like this typically. And there's also a lot of commentary on, you know, people who are just there for clout, you know, like people that are just trying to grow their social media pages. I also feel conflicted about this book you know, because I never really found myself caring a whole lot about the characters or like what was happening to them. And like maybe that was the point is that they were all supposed to feel very kind of like one dimensional because they were all like reality TV show stars. So I understand that maybe that was kind of the point. So I do think maybe it, it did achieve what it was trying to do. But like enjoyable wise, I don't know. I guess I was just expecting something a little different. Like I was just expecting something more. And so I feel like this has to be like a three star for me. I don't have any strong feelings towards it either way. Like I think it was a perfectly fine read, but I don't think it's something that I would necessarily go around like strongly recommending. I will say though that it was really wild and really unique. Like I don't really think I've ever read anything like this, nor will I probably ever read anything like this ever again. Like it is definitely unique. All right, and that is a wrap on this reading vlog. I'm sorry to end it on kind of a bummer note there. I feel like this reading vlog was very up and down and all over the place and even though I didn't find any new favorite books necessarily, um, I still found some that I enjoyed and some that surprised me a little bit. I really think, you know, Love in the Time of Serial Killers was one of the most wild <laughs> roller coaster rides of an experience that I've had with a book in a long time and then I was actually really surprised by the book Runtime. I really wasn't sure how it's gonna feel about this just because of my love-hate relationship with this author in the past, but I really ended up enjoying runtime. So like, I'm, I'm, you know, pretty surprised by that one. And I like reading books like The Last Housewife because even though it wasn't the most enjoyable experience for me, it really helps me to, you know, narrow down my personal taste in books. And it really hurts my heart that I didn't love this one as much as I wanted to and as much as a lot of my friends seem to because it really seems like a lot of my friends are really loving this and saying it's probably like one of their favorite thrillers of the year. And like, I'm so happy for them. It just wasn't exactly my particular favorite taste. Like I'm definitely the kind of person who enjoys books like In My Dreams I Hold a Knife a little bit more than the more serious ones like this. But anyways, that is a full wrap. Um, as mentioned before, if you are watching this on my YouTube channel and you want to see the extended reading vlog where I also read The Paul Bearers Club, I'll have that extended reading vlog linked down below. Thank you so much for watching as always and I will see you very soon with another video. Bye!